This video is for you to understand the modified 2020 AP Physics 1 test and how to study for it. I have a prediction based on some data on what might be on the test with two standard deviation of certainty. All this information is public and available to all students and educators on the College Board website. First of all, I have the date on when the test is. The Physics 1 test is going to be on May 14, 2020. This is now actually only a two question test. And these are based on the FRQs that were going to be given out this year, but they take out all three of them, only leaving two left. Question one, question two. Question one is 25 minutes to respond and five minutes to upload your responses. It's calculated weight is 60% of the overall grade. If you can just get question one, you can get a four because based on last year's and previous years, a 60% overall point is basically around a four notice once you have submitted your answer for question one you cannot go back question two is a 15 minute response and you're going to take five minutes to upload it afterwards it's calculated weight is 40 percent of your overall grade if you can just get question two 40 percent is roughly around the cutoff for a three here are some specific informations one you need your formula sheet please have it printed out prior to the test you should already have a physical copy from your class. Two, um, you can use a calculator, but you're not going to be using it a lot. Calculations are, can be done by hand, okay? G can be used as 10. Like college exams, this would be open notebook and open test, but don't assume you're gonna be rumming through all your notes during this time. You have a limited amount of time. This video should give you a better understanding of what notes you should have set up prior to the test. Last. You can take this test on any device, computer, tablet, or smartphone, and you can upload your responses after you take a picture, like in a PDF, but it must be only in one document. Here's the best part about the AP Physics test. You only have one page to submit or one picture to submit for question one, and once you submit it, you're done. Then you do question two and you submit it. So news camster, take a picture of that page. Once you do it, submit it. The interesting part is that there are some students who don't have phones and will not take a picture of it. This is why I think deriving the equation will not be on the test because that requires a lot of writing of math symbols and typing it would be very difficult. Okay, But this is what you're here for. What are the questions that are actually on the test? The question types are very specific on what's going to be asked. Question one is called a QQT and it's worth 20, 12 points. It's a quanti quantitative qualitative translation. The possible units that this question can be based on are only three units. Unit two, dynamics, which is forces. Unit four, energy, both kinetic and potential. And unit seven, torque and rotational motion. That is like your rotation kinematics, torques, and angular momentum. This is the history of the QQT question that have been released since the test was recreated okay this is going back by this year last year 2019 it was question two that was the qqt the topic was that was dynamics 2008 it was question three which was on unit seven torque 2017 it was question two covered unit two dynamics 2017 um, it was also question three covering unit seven, torque and rotational motion. Unit 16, it was question three. Unit two, which is dynamics. And question 15, question three, the topic was actually on energy. And using this and following the pattern, I don't think that they're going to bring up in other dynamics this year as the QQT question, okay? Energy has not been asked for a while. So I think with strong evidence that the QQT question is actually going to be on an energy question. That's my first pick. Second pick, it would be on the dynamics. Then it would be on torque. Um, there is a chance that energy and dynamics are combined in one question because you can describe um, forces and energy sort of related. Okay. If you would like to study and prepare your notes for the test, go through each one of these questions and see how it's done and how it's graded. Okay, and these are the only questions you look at because the first question is going to be QQT. If you can master this, you're guaranteed a four if you get all the points. 
Second question. It's called a paragraph response question. It is worth seven points, and this question will always say this. In a clear core paragraph length response that may also contain diagram and or equations, explain your reasoning. This question, the possible units that are covered for this question are only four. Unit one, kinematics. Unit three, circular motion and gravitation. Unit five, momentum. And unit seven, torque and rotational motion. These are the release FRQs that are the paragraph response question since the test has been recreated and released. Last year, 2019, it was question four, but the unit for that was your DC circuits. That was removed because it's not on this test. 2018, it was question five, which is unit six, harmonic motion. Weird because it's not in here, but that's what it is. 2017, it was question four, which covered dynamics. 2016, it was question five, but that unit is unit 10, which is waves, which was removed for this year's test. And 2015, it was question four, it was unit one, dynamics. The fact that circuits and waves are removed the only thing left is um, circular motion, torque, momentum, kinematics. So my prediction is that it's actually going to be kinematics. Um, kinematics is very straightforward and easy to graph and explain. Second, I think it's momentum. If they want to be brutal to you, it would be torque. Notice unit six is actually left out here. Unit six, if you look at the way the test is structured and they tell you what units are going to ask on what type of questions, unit six, which is on simple harmonic motion, can only be done on an experimental design question and a short answer question. It's not one of these two. It was weird because question two here in 2018 actually was a simple harmonic motion question. So there is a possibility that that is there, okay? But most likely, I think it's going to be kinematic. So if you want to study for the paragraph part question, please look at kinematics first, then momentum, then lastly, torque. Okay, but this is what the paragraph response question will be on. All right, I want to give you some more information on what the QQT is. Uh, the QQT is um, has three parts. You're going to work with multiple representations. So you have to look at an equation, a chart, and a graph, and you have to explain it somehow. Secondly, you're going to evaluate a student's work. So if you looked at the AP Physics workbook and they talk about like Angelica makes this argument, Blake's makes this argument, who's right, who's wrong, what part of the argument is correct, what part of the argument is wrong. That's what this part is talking about. Lastly, you're going to also evaluate that student's representation. Like um, Angelica presents this chart, Blake draws this graph, Angelica draws this graph. And... And that's what most likely is going to happen okay and if you look if you work on the workbook it shows this in really good detail the three three skills that you need to be able to understand and know how to do for the qqt is one looking at the graph does the slope make sense what does the slope mean in the context of the question increasing decreasing um, zero what does that mean intercept what does the y intercept mean the starting value should the line be linear or exponential should it be a line or a curve Second, you also want to make sure you understand the numerator and, and the denominator stuff, okay? If you work on the workbook, you should see like um, acceleration is equal to the summation of all the forces divided by the mass. So a question like this would be like, what happens when mass increases? How does that affect the acceleration, okay? Or how does the acceleration change if you have more forces, right? Lastly, you also want to make sure you can analyze an equation looking at a proportional relationship or not, like force is equal to mass times acceleration, okay? Or Hooke's law, F is equal to Kx. If X doubles, the restorative force, F, is going to also double because it has a linear relationship, first degree. But let's say if it's potential energy, one half mv squared, right? If velocity doubles, kinetic energy quadruples because velocity is squared so you want to make sure you're able to analyze that okay but this is how a qqt question works all right so hopefully this video gives you a better understanding on what those two types of questions are how to study for these two type of questions where they are and how to approach the tests okay all right good luck